Hello, my crafty ninja friends. Today is another vlog. As you can tell, I'm going to be walking around in my courtyard, common area. Oh, hello, lizard. There's a lizard running in front of me. <laughs> Must have been sunning itself. And just kind of catch y'all up with what I've been doing. So I don't know how many of y'all saw, but I did end up doing a live with Teresa Collins, well, a live on Teresa Collins' Facebook page, teaching a folded kind of folio. Um, so go over and check that out. I'll have the link in the description box below. Um, it is, uh, it's really fun. It's super simple and it, um, you can use any paper collection. I use the Wanderlust collection. So go check that out. Um, I guess I'll put a picture right here in post. So there's that. Um, let's see, what have I been working on? So I've been working on that. Um, I was creating that. I've been doing my posts for planning. So just creatively sticking stickers in my planner and trying to have kind of an organized life. I'm really working on that still. Um, Let's see, uh, what have I, what am I planning to do? You know, I have been wanting to do more jelly printing or gelatin plate printing. And so I think I'm gonna do that um, later this afternoon. So I will film that and I will hopefully tack that on to the end of this vlog. Um, let's see, so I'm just using some stamps and some acrylic paint for that. So that should be a lot of fun. I really enjoy mono printing on a jelly plate. It is a lot of fun to do and super simple and there's no wrong way to do it really as long as you're not messing up the jelly plate. Uh, let's see what else. What have I been cooking and making? Well, I've been like, you know, cooking for my family. I haven't really done a lot of extra stuff though. I did get my Amazon subscribe and save and I might have ordered a whole box of Jet Puffed Mini Marshmallows for Rice Krispie Treats because I get tired of going to my local Smart and Final and them not having mini marshmallow treats. Not mini marshmallow treats, but just mini marshmallows. And the price that they were was a lot cheaper than what they usually are in the store. So yeah, I buy multiple bags at a time because I make a double batch and they're delicious. Um, they kind of look like that and I add all sorts of flavors in them so they're super fun to make and super easy and you don't have to use the uh, jet puffed ones you can use the ones from Trader Joe's or the dandies ones and those are actually vegan so you can make your rice crispies either vegetarian if you use butter or vegan if you use a butter alternative so there's that maybe I'll make rice crispy treats today too because it's a Friday and my kid didn't have school so yes oh yes and this week was is still currently teacher appreciation week and nurse appreciation week so thank you to all the nurses and the teachers that are out there um, we honestly wouldn't be where we were without you <laughs> taking care of us um, in various different settings so yeah so but it is kind of sad um, that we have to have an appreciation week that means that y'all aren't compensated enough in your jobs and that needs to change personal opinion <laughs> um, so yeah so there's that let's see what else it has been beautiful here in um, Silicon Valley, California. It is supposed to be in the low to mid 70s today. It was in the upper 80s at the beginning of the week. It was a little warm, but it was nice. There's a nice cool breeze. I am outside enjoying the lovely breeze. I'm, let's see. I'm wearing my lovely, lovely, lovely leggings from Sugar and Sloth, the Sugar and Sloth and Lucy Lockets combination. They are super soft and comfy and I just love wearing them around the house and out and about. So those are a lot of fun. I love them. Um, yeah. Oh. And there's somebody cutting stuff in the background. So maybe I'll just wait. Oh, there we go. Now it's quiet again. <laughs> I'll see in post how bad that is. 
Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're winding down for the school year. We've got like, well, my son's only got like four weeks left thereabouts, um, which is amazing. And then I'm gonna have a middle schooler. Oh my God. I can't believe that I'm going to have a middle schooler. That's kind of ridiculous to me, but oh well. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't really have anything else. I'm going to gelatin print later today. Uh, maybe I'll make some Rice Krispie Treats and take y'all along for that too, because Rice Krispie Treats are delicious, especially the ones that I make. Like, yeah, they're delicious. Um, let's see. All right. Well, definitely check out the live that I did with, that I did with Teresa. Well, that I did on Teresa's uh, Facebook page. It's a great tutorial on how to make a lovely, fun, folded folio. Um, uh, it looks like that. There we go. I'll put, <laughs> I'll put a picture of that project in, in post. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow things on All Things Social. And oh my goodness, there is, where is it? Oh my goodness, there's like a bunny bun bun. Where is that? Oh my goodness, there's a bunny behind me. Let's see, where is it? Where's the bunny? Oh my goodness, where's the bunny? <laughs> oh, isn't nature lovely? It's a funny bun bun. I'm a funny bun bun. All right. <laughs> well, we'll keep the bunny in the background. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on all things social. Um, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Hello everybody, and this is a gelatin plate. This is from Jelly Arts, it's an eight inch round plate. You can get many different sizes and shapes um, from a few different companies that are around, but I have this, I pulled this out of my stash. Uh, let's see, I have this lovely permanent light violet. I have a Hanson yellow, a quinacridone magenta, and this metallic peacock pearl paint that I pulled all from my stash. And I have some stamps from Teresa Collins. This one is the Forever Love stamp set. This is the floral stamp set and the Never Give Up stamp set. So I'm gonna be playing around with these um, let's see what other supplies do I have. I also have some brayers in different sizes. I have a small, a large, and a medium. These are softer brayers. Um, I got them in a three pack from Amazon. So I will link that in the description box below as with all the supplies that I use in this, um, this demonstration. And then to kind of roll off my brayer or stamp off, I have, um, I think this is a Dina Wakely book um, that just has a lot of different types of paper in it. It's got some like handmade paper, some canvas, um, some burlap, and just fun textured paper. And I'm just gonna roll my brayer off in here because if you're art journaling, it just kind of gives you a jumping off point and you aren't starting with a blank, blank page. So there's that. Let's see. Um, I'm going to start off by pulling a couple prints on some 32 pound um, printer paper. It's my favorite HP um, premium brand. I'll link that below. And then I think I might transition to some 110 pound um, cover from Nina um, if I find that um, everything's kind of really working and gelling. Let's see, what else do I need? Da, da, da. All right, um, this is kind of inspired by Birgit Kopsen. She is doing a monthly, well not a monthly, um, a a printing challenge, like a 30 day printing challenge this month of May. And I saw um, that for Friday, 
it was to do stamps. This is something that I've wanted to do for a while and I really liked her style and how she did it. So I'm gonna kind of use that technique to start off and then we'll see kind of how we diverge. You can use so many things on a jelly plate. Um, you can use stamps, you can use stencils, you can use kind of like soft mark making tools because this is soft so you don't want anything like too hard. Um, all right, let's get into it. I'm going to start off with uh, the Quinacridone Magenta. This is a heavy body acrylic and um, this Deco Art Peacock Pearls that you can just grab at, both of these you can actually probably grab at Michael's or your local craft store. Make sure you shake up these if they've been sitting for a while because I think this has been sitting for at least a year. So we will put out a little bit on here. We'll just kind of dot it out. It's nice and thick. A little goes a long way, um, especially with kind of the heavy body acrylics because they are really thick and uh, highly pigmented. As with like any art supply, like the, a lot of times the more expensive they are, the more higher quality they are going to be. So investing in good art supplies is gonna get you a good result. So I'm just gonna start rolling this out. And see, it spreads over nicely. And the thinner the paint that you put down, the, um, the more transparent it will be. So let me open my book over here to a blank page. And I'm just gonna roll this off before I start braying this metallic. I think I'll add a little bit more of that on here just because it is turning out to be a little transparent. There we go. And I'll brayer this off on the side as well. All right, oh, let me get a stamping block. I have quite a few stamping blocks in my collection. So I'm gonna start off using this flower from the Never Give Up collection. I really do love um, Teresa's stamps. So I'm just gonna put that on here in the center. And then I'm gonna Stamp here and then stamp there. Stamp, stamp, stamp. And just to kind of have fun and play with this. All right, and then I'm gonna stamp this off in my art journal as well. I'm gonna pull a sheet of paper. And since I kind of lined this up on here, I'm just gonna try to line this up on here and we're gonna print it and see how we do. I'm just gonna rub it nicely, making sure to get all over the jelly plate because you wanna pick up everything. There we go, and there we go. There's our first print. All right, I'm gonna do this a few more times. I'm gonna pull a ghost print from this one because sometimes the second print is more fun than the first. and it serves to clean your plate for the next one. Now I haven't done jelly printing in a couple years. So there we go, there's the second one, that's fine. Go ahead and leave your plate like this and we're just gonna continue to work. So I'm gonna put a little bit less paint on here 
and not blend it up to the center as much. All right, and then I'm gonna use actually a Titan Buff, which is kind of a an off-white sort of color to roll over the back of this, and then we'll print that and see how that looks. All right, and there is a print. Look at that. That is the start of something wonderful. All right, let's try that again. Just keep on iterating and trying until you get something that you kind of like. There we go, there is another one. And every time is gonna be like a learning process. So that one, I want a little bit more color here and there, but I like the um, kind of taupey background. So we're gonna continue on with that. And I'm just rolling off my brayer in my art journal. I'm really loving how this is looking. Sometimes it, when you have an idea, it just takes a few iterations to try to figure out how to get what you want. Okay, we'll let this dry and then we'll put the Titan We'll put the Titan buff behind it and then pull the print. Here is what my art journal looks like. See, I just rolled off the brayer on the pages and it's a really great background to start off with. Oh, let me look and see what I've done in my art journal, which hasn't been a lot this year. Um, this year or in last year. So I only have a few pages done. So I have this one. If you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. Bloom. Here's another fun one with a stamp and a stencil. And then this, Black Lives Matter. And then that was inspired by a friend and a planner group, which is really fun. That, and that is what we have so far. And then this is a background for something that I can do in the future. I think that's dry enough. Let's get some Titan buff on here and roll it out. Some 110 pound paper because I think this one is going to be one of my favorites and I want it on some nice paper. If you have too much paint on your brayer you can always just roll it off a little bit and then that will pick up some of it. Okay all right let's get our nice paper in here and see what we have. See this is nice thick paper nicely rub all over it. Sometimes you can use it's used in um, printmaking and that just kind of gives you a nice even sort of pressure. You can use this on your stamping platforms as well to kind of get really good pressure for your big background stamps. All right, let's see how this turned out. There we go. That did not print as well as I thought it would. Let's pull a ghost print and see how that looks. It's looking pretty cool too. Here, 
There we go. That is what I was looking for. Perfect. All right, let's pull a ghost print. Let's move on to some other colors. Okay, let's do yellow and quinacridone because I think they're gonna, we'll see how they mix on the plate. I'll move the quinacridone up here and we'll use the yellow down here. Use this stamp from the floral stamp set. It's a little bit more bold of a stamp set. The line is a little thicker, so let's see how that Let's use some, you know, we're gonna use white on the back of it. This is just regular old zinc white. It's a more transparent uh, white than titanium white, which is more opaque. There we go, that is super sunny and fun. Let's see what the ghost print looks like. Print it on this one and see how it looks. There you go, just layering up that circle. All right, let's do that one again, but try it with the Titan Buff background. So yellow on the bottom, and the quinacridone magenta. And since I'm not quite happy how far this came down, I'm just going to kind of pick it up a little bit with my baby wipe. Dry down a little bit more. All right, let's put the Titan buff on this and print this one. All right, let's pull this print. All right, there we go. Look at that print. That is so pretty. All right, y'all, that is kind of my demo for jelly printing today. Let me just print this ghost print. Clean it off. And the great thing about jelly printing is you can just leave your plate like this. You can clean it off if you want, um, but you don't have to. So I might just swipe it off a little bit. But the beauty of jelly printing is that you, the layers and the imperfections that come from all the paint really just kind of add to the textural element of jelly printing and it's not a perfect thing. So let me zoom out just a tiny bit and I will show y'all all the prints that I made. So this is the last one that we made, which is probably one of my favorites. And then we had, I had a little bit of a learning process because I had to get back into it. So we had this one, and that one. That one's pretty, ah, got some paint on mine. That one's pretty good. That one, not so much, but you know what? You can always print something else on top of that. So don't toss any of the ones that didn't turn on exactly how you wanted to. That's probably, you could print like something white on top of that. It's a really good kind of starting off point. So there we go. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on all my social medias. Definitely subscribe to this YouTube channel. I really appreciate having 200 
plus followers as of today. I think it was 201 when I looked earlier this week, so thank y'all so much. Share my videos with your friends and um, have an amazing day and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Oh yeah, and one last tip. Don't use the acetate that your um, jelly plate came in, came on. When you put it on, you're gonna most certainly get bubbles. Use just a sheet of typing paper or just copy paper and that'll keep your um, plate nice and smooth.